Hello everyone, we're in chapter 7, the sampling distribution of the sample mean, and in this lecture we're going to look at section 7.1. We're going to define sampling error and why do we need this. So I'm going to go to my notepad here. Now, we're not going to use a stat crunch, we're going to define some conceptual ideas and then um, take a look at the book's example. That's all we're doing in this section. So here we go. First, I'm going to define the sampling error. So let's define our sampling error as the difference between the population parameter and the sample statistic. And again, we're relying on earlier definitions. Remember the, the parameters or the unknowns of the population and statistics are the known quantities from the sample. Now, to give you an example here right off the bat, an example, let's say for instance, the parameter that we're looking at, the parameter here is going to be mu, and somehow <clears throat> we're going to um, know the value of the mu in a moment, but, uh, but that's what the parameter is. And the statistic that we are using in order to estimate it is going to be uh, x bar. Okay, so there we have it. We have a parameter and we have a statistic. Now, the error here, the error, or simply E for error, is given by um, the difference between x bar minus mu. That's all that is. The difference between those two quantities is what the perceived error would be. So to make a numerical example, I'm going to, let's say, my mean mu is going to be 100. And I'm going to let, the, let's say, my first sample mean be 80 so based on this one sample i can calculate the error between the statistic and the parameter mu to be 80 minus 100 and in this case the sampling error is negative 20 which clearly means we are underestimating we are underestimating the mean true now now let's say I have another sample, and the second sample, x bar 2, uh, ends up being 110. So my error now is going to be 110 minus 100, and that's going to be a positive 10. So in this case, I am overestimating the mean. And this is always going to be the dilemma, rarely if ever sample mean and population means end up being the same in practice when we work with uh, sample data but just to make something up suppose the sample mean turns out to be a hundred which is the same as the population mean and in this case of course there is no error in estimation the error is zero so this is the case where the sample mean is correctly estimating the population mean okay so that's what the sampling error is. And I'm just going to underline this. Now we can contrast a sampling uh, error with a non-sampling error. So let me uh, go ahead and write this one now. So when we talk about non-sampling error, you can think about just about everything else that's not related to sampling. That would be your non-sampling error. So no sampling error, this is going to be simply the deviations or let's say discrepancies. These are deviation or discrepancies. Um, let me move that. Okay. Um, from the true value of the parameter. Mm 
that are not these are not due to uh, nor are a function nor are a function of the selected sample and there you go so that's what the non sampling error is going to be this thing right in here okay now usually these non sampling errors these are hard to quantify okay well, i'm just going to maybe write these for you as hints um, okay so these are typically hard to quantify now to quantify means to put it in numbers in other words it is hard to quantify them so these kind of errors example of non sampling errors are uh, such things as like the input error uh, the operator inputs the right and wrong information uh, you can think of your typographical errors here your typos and you can think of the biases that maybe and so on and so forth etc so that's what the uh, the non-sampling errors are going to be now the source the source of sampling error by the way may be a bias as i have it here biases so what do we mean by bias here is simple let's say if you have some individuals that are um, less likely to be included than others in your sample then that would be an example of a bias okay and these biases of course could cause the error to become positive or negative depending on how they work themselves out okay now we can actually uh, remove the bias in selection by using a simple random sample so usually that's how we handle how, that's how we will handle the bias by using simple random samples now the other thing we gotta note here is that these sampling errors uh, they're usually unavoidable and the reason primarily is that when we sample we choose a subset of the population true so we're not working with the whole population seldom we do therefore the sampling error again is inevitable it's going to happen whether we want it or not we just have to manage and deal with it and um, finally something to note here is that usually the larger the sample size then the greater the probability is that our statistics will be close to the parameter now remember when the statistics and the parameter are close together then that means the error was going to be uh, very small because that's how we define sampling error so maybe i'll write that up here there you go so we can call the error to be the value of the parameter minus less uh, the statistic and there you have it that's what that would be let me enlarge that one okay so uh, the closer the parameter and the statistics are together the less of the error that's going to be and that's a good thing we like that now the other thing in this section is that we're going to talk about it's called the sampling distribution of a statistic so let's talk about this one so we're talking about uh, sampling distribution of a statistic okay now here's how we're going to define the sampling distribution of a statistics we're going to call this um, the probability distribution let me change my pens can not uh, not sure I'm not happy with it anyway the probability distribution of that statistic when 
repeated samples of the same size and call it in our sample size same size uh, or selected from the population so that's what in general is true for any statistic so uh, in the sampling distribution of a statistic notice that's what we're talking about is again the probability distribution of that statistics in repeated sampling okay now in this chapter we're interested in the sampling distribution of our statistics going to be x bar okay so let's talk about the sampling distribution of x bar um, there we go so when we talk about the sampling distribution of x bar which is the sample mean by this we're talking about uh, the probability this will be the probability distribution of x bar um, when repeated samples of the same size in are selected again from the population there you go notice the definition parallels what's up here it's very similar to the general definition this is for any statistic and this is for a specific statistics uh, statistic namely x bar and that's our focus in this um, in this chapter okay now um one thing that we can note is this by the way when we take a sample and let's say i want to uh, take a sample of five students from the class and look at their average test scores now uh, depending on which students are in my sample each time i choose five different students chances are the sample mean is going to be different so because each sample could potentially lead to a different x bar sample mean therefore the sample mean x bar itself becomes a random variable that means its value is going to change from sample to sample so uh, because it is a random variable that means it's most likely yeah. has some kind of a probability distribution now we are interested in the shape and the parameters of this distribution by the way okay so that's kind of where we're going with this and it's in the last section of chapter 7 section 7.3 that will determine the shape and the parameters of the sampling distribution of x bar okay now it's important again part of the reason we want to do this is because um we're going to be using this information in our future chapters so chapter seven is really a pivotal chapter for us it pretty much lays the groundwork for what we will be doing in the future chapters so that's why it's such an important chapter for us but section 7.3 is definitely very important for us in what we're going to do later on <coughs> now with that I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the page of the book and after this we're just going to focus on one example in the book and let's see how this is going to turn out so now in this example that we're going to take a look at this example on page 298 of your textbook okay so uh, let me uh, see let me put the keyboard back on so that I don't have to uh, bring up the keyboard from the screen here uh, and uh, there you go that was the snap of the keyboard uh, into my one note okay now I can actually talk about this so we're gonna go to page 298 and take a look at an example here and see how this is gonna work 
So we're going to go to page 298. We're going to try to uh, clarify this concept of what we mean by the um, sampling distribution of X bar. Okay, so here in this example, we're going to follow this example very closely. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so in this example, and you can read it for yourself, these are the heights of um, basketball teams. Now, something that's noteworthy up here is if we actually want to find the possible samples uh, of the same size, if you want to look at the sampling distribution of X bar where population is large, well, each time I have to choose a different subset um, of same size from a large population. So uh, the problem of actually listing or enumerating these samples is going to be very huge. So for that reason, what the author has done here, he's created a five, uh, five point five player data set. And we're going to treat this as if it's the population. Okay. I know the size is a small, but uh, it works well for the example that we're doing. Okay, it gets the concept, illustrates the concept. So anyway, these are five players, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, now for these five players, these are the heights of these players. Now, if this is the population, we can find mu, the population mean, by simply adding this total, right, adding these scores. And getting the total and dividing it by uh, the population size, which is 5. And that's what uh, he's going to do on the next page. So there you go. We are up here now. So the mu, remember, we're going to treat it as if it's a population. It's going to be some of the scores divided by the number of scores. And that's going to be 80 inches. <coughs> so 80 inches is the parameter. No, seldom this is known, and that's why we're going through this practice. So here's what, what uh, he, he has done now. So let's choose all samples of size 2, possible samples of size 2. There's going to be 10 of these, and we can actually uh, show that, you know, why there's 10 of them. It's not difficult to do. In fact, let me real quick show you why there's going to be 10 of them. And remember, we have a group of five subjects. We're going to choose two of them. Uh, order is not important in our work. So um, let's say we have five players. And we want to choose two from them. So we got five, we want to choose two. So if you remember, the way we did it is using the five choose two notation. That would be... 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial 5 minus 2 factorial and that's going to be 5 4 3 2 1 divided by 2 factorial is 2 1 and 5 minus 2 is 3 factorial which is 3 2 and 1 then of course i can cross out the 3 2 1 3 2 1 here and this becomes that's equal to 20 divided by 2 10 so that's why in the book, you're going to see 10 of them. Now, while I'm here, actually, let me show you this. <clears throat> Suppose I want to choose um, subsets of size 3, 3 players. So that's going to be 5 factorial, 3 factorial, 5 minus 3 factorial. And that's going to make it 5 factorial. And then this is going to be 3 factorial. 5 minus 3 is 2 factorial. And again, if you just simply write the factorial out, this is going to be 3, 2, 1, and then 2, 1. Again, I'm going to cross out the 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 from here. And uh, let me enlarge these so we can see them better. Okay. And this is going to give me, remember, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 are canceled. So this is going to give me 10. So there's going to be 10 subsets of size 3. Now, if I want to choose, let's say, 5 players from f 4 players from 5 players total, that's going to be 5 factorial, 4 factorial, 5 minus 4 factorial. 
5, 4, 3, 2, 1 divided by 4 factorial is 4, 3, 2, 1. 5 minus 4 is 1 factorial. And for this work, we're going to cross out 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's going to make this 5. And we'll see these 5s. You can see them in example 7.3. On page 299 we're gonna actually see these five <clears throat> so I just want to note how do we know how many possible samples there are okay so let me go back to the page of the book and here we are so he has actually listed all possible samples of size 2 here <clears throat> now for each sample we're going to find the average, 76, 78, the average 77. The next sample, 77 and a half, so on, so on, so on, and so forth. Now, if you note, each of these sample means are different. We see that each of them are different. So every one of these is an estimate of the average mu AD, this number that's up here, mu AD. So here we have sampling error, right? We are underestimating by three, under under over under under over 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 so sometimes you're over sometimes you're under now except this one this one so happens that it's exactly 80 the same as mu that's just a lucky shot now what he's done next is he's actually um done a dot plot of these uh, x bars and something by the way if you add these there should be 10 of these right if you add up these 10 scores, they will add up to 800. And you divide it by 10, you're going to get 80. So although individual samples may vary, but when you average individual averages, so you do an average of averages, that average is going to be exactly the population mean. So that's not a coincidence. That's going to happen every time. And there you have it. <clears throat> now, um, I think one of your homework in chapter 7 in my math lab, it's very similar to this exercise. So uh, please make sure you review this exercise again on your own. Okay. Now, um, one question that he asked, let me see up here in part C. It says, find the probability that for a random sample of size 2, the sampling error in estimating the population mean by the sample mean will be one inch or less. Okay, so we want to look at X bar will be within one inch of the mean. Now remember, the mean is 80. Within an inch of a mean means within an inch of 80. That would be 80 plus or minus one. The plus will give you 81, the minus gives you 79. So we want to know what percentage of these sample means are uh, between 79 and 81 right so 79 and 81 this one is not 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 this one is so so far we have one this one is not this one is remember between 79 and 81 so that's the second one 82 it's about 81 we don't count that 80 is there's three of them this one is higher higher so only three out of ten are within one unit, one inch of AD. And that's why he has them here. So you got three out of ten that meet that requirement. So the probability is three tenths that the sample mean is going to be within one inch of the population mean. And here's again the dot plot of these. Notice mu is here, 80, and that's what this is. And um, but individual means are different now uh, same exercise what he's done this time is actually he's he's choosing samples of size four players and remember on my notepad i showed that there are five samples right five choose four so these are the actual listing of those uh, samples of size four so you find the average of these four you get 78 and a half the next set of four you get 79.75 and the next and the next and the next and again if you add up these scores these x bars and this time divide them by one two three four five 
this total I bet you is going to be eight. Uh, it's going to be four hundred. You divide it by five, and you're going to get eighty again. Okay, so that's very interesting how that happens. So, now having gone through this, let's just finish this section off with with this drawing right in here. <clears throat> so, how does the sample size therefore affects um, our sampling error? Now, in this in this figure 7.3, what he has done actually is this. <clears throat> he's, ch he's chosen samples of size 1. Well, sample of size 1 means each time you select one player. So, he selects one player here, second time, one player here. There are five ways to choose sample of size one, right? To select each player. Now, that's pretty much the original data looks like. And the average of these for sure will be 80. And there you go. That's where this mu is. Mu is 80, and this projects all the way down here. Now, with repeated samples of size two. So, he repeated the experiment. Remember, each time he took players sample of size two, calculates their heights, the average heights, and listed them. There were 10 of those on the previous page, and there you have it. And then if you take a repeated sample of size 3, well, uh, you can do my 5 choose 3, same as 5 choose 2. There's going to be 10 of those. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There you go. Now something interesting is happening here. If you look at how this is shaping up you see how it's funneling down look at your sampling error actually the this the dispersion i should say the dispersion for the sampling distribution decreases as the sample size increases so notice here the dispersion about the center these points are closer together than the ones up here these points are closer together than the ones above them. That's sample of size 3. What if we choose a sample of size 4? There you go. Remember, there are 5 of those means. The deviation shrinks. And what if he chooses all 5 players? Well, all 5 players, that would be the samples, uh, the population size in this case, right? The unrealistic population size of 5. And there's only one way you can do that is to choose all five players and their average of course ends up being 80. so again we're looking at the shrinkage of the sampling error as the sample size increases from one to two to three to four to five okay now we're gonna finalize that on the next page and we will be done with this section and there you go this is what we want to get out of this work so the sample size and sampling error the larger the sample size the smaller the sampling error so that's the takeaway from this section and again we're pretty much done with the section just introduce the idea of sampling error and uh, the effect of sample size which is right in here on sampling error so we're done with section 7.1 now in section 7.2 my next um, video or my next clip we talk about the mean and standard deviation of those means of each of those that we looked at okay so until then um, that's all we want to talk about in this section